Welcome, I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy, and this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Welcome, it's Impact Weekly. We're back. We have another question to, to discuss today. Today, we're talking more about product and customer success. And I think all, a lot of us, or most of our, us, have very, uh, we work very closely with uh, the product team in some way. Uh, at least we, we are in the front facing the customers that use our product. So there's there's a very di- interesting dynamic between customer success and product, and that's where we're going to dig in today. So this is the question. What is the best way for customer success and product to collaborate? How should product feedback uh, uh, be fed back from customer success to product in a consistent and structured way so that the right product decisions can be made? Okay, I, this is a great question I mean, and, and something that comes up a lot. I'm actually really excited to get your perspective on this. Um, you know, as as CEO of Start Deliver, you have I think um, Start Deliver is, is a CSM uh, product company, so I think you have a really um, amazing uh, sort of viewpoint um, and overseeing the relationship between product and customer success here. So I'm 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 really interested in your perspective. No, but I think this is it's a really interesting question, and I. I know, I mean, both being in in customer meetings, getting a lot of feedback from the customers and also being in a lot of product meetings where we discuss roadmap and product decisions. It is, uh, for anyone who has not been in those environments, I think, you know, managing a product, uh, if it's a SaaS product, uh, whatever it is, and uh, making decisions for what to build, what to not to build, how to do things, it is hard stuff. So I think this is a, it's a very interesting question. And um, it's something we, if we take the customer success perspective, it's something we, as customer success managers, we need to deal with this. So I'll, I'll answer some things from a customer success point of view and also some things from like managing a product, being a founder of a SaaS product. And I mean, there's, um, you have to know also that most, I would say most tech companies, most SaaS companies, most product companies, very few uh, ideas and feature requests will be implemented in general. Right. I, don't know, I don't have the data for it, but my, my own experience is that maybe 5% uh, will actually become a feature, hmm. at least in the way the customer <laughs> presented the idea. So I think that's, that's, that's something to keep in mind here. That's that's interesting. I have to tell you. I mean, I've always, again, I love this perspective. It's interesting. Um, you know, I, I find it humorous or <laughs> interesting or maybe f- infuriating. I'm not sure. You know, when when customer feedback kind of seems to be completely discounted, like who are you building this product for? But I I get it. I also see how it could be confusing, and so I I think it's a very delicate balancing act right i mean from from the ceo from your perspective and then from product to to not just take every you know customer whim and 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 run with it so you know sometimes it does seem like the customer is is ignored like what's going on there yeah no but exactly i mean everybody wants to listen to the customers i mean they have the be customer centric uh, and all those things but there's a few things that make this hard. I would I will mention a few here. So it's you know when you get f- product feedback, it's um, it can be for various reasons. Um, it it can also be that you know that it can be okay. Did how did how did we capture this feedback? Mm. Did the person capture the feedback really understand what the user or the, the customer really said? Uh, ha- has the customer really understood how this feature should ha- should work? So there's many layers and, and uh, opportunities mm. for confusion there, you know? 
Um, so so that's one part of it. Is this, uh, you know, of course there's when you some feedback is uh, you know evident. Uh, I mean, a, a bug is a bug, right? Uh, sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> even if you can question that, but but I mean, th- if we take more feature requests um, and that type of thing, it can be um, it can be hard to determine what's what uh, basically in the, in the feedback you get. Interesting. I, I know uh, sometimes, and this is this is really, it's it's frustrating for CSMs uh, and, and really just anybody involved in this process. You know, a customer will, um, you know, let's say you know they're going through onboarding process and, and they just switched from your you know your main competitor, yep. and all they all they keep saying is this isn't how they did it. You know, this isn't how we did it in that other product. Um, you know, where's the blue button? You know, and it's like, but you guys switched. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why? You know, and, and, and sometimes that's because the, the user that you're talking to didn't necessarily want to switch, right? It was economic or it was some other reason. Um, and so the end user that you're hearing from is just frustrated because their, their work stream uh, has, has changed. The, the, the process and the flow has changed. Um, so I totally get that where the feedback that you're getting is not necessarily feedback on your product it's feedback on the customer's expectations of your product probably yes. based on something that they did with a competitive product or or that's interesting okay right okay. no but definitely so you exactly so they come in with some expectations on how things should work and if you're not i mean exactly if you have solved it in a different way uh their feedback is based on their you know previous mm. experience with another tool so that's okay. one part of it. Some and also, you know, some some users, some customers, they you know they they love to share ideas, they love to give feedback, they just you know do it you know very easily. And then uh, then you have on the other, on the flip side, you have these users that they don't say anything until they are really pissed off, right? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, you have that spectra, and and when you just get one, and, and if you don't know where they are. You don't know how to where I mean how to weigh that uh, feedback either. So right, yeah. yeah. I think as a CSM, I think one of the things you can do is solicit feedback. I mean, uh, there's even better if we have a system for collecting feature requests that that like the community can vote on and all of that stuff. Yeah. But but if you don't have that, um, I think one of the things to do to avoid the sort of um, volcano explosion you know, is to have little explosions along the way <laughs> um, yeah. where where you ask them, you know, about their experience or you ask for feedback. So you get them to share those things as they're going so they don't have just one massive, you know, explosion later on. But the other thing is you, you do want to make people feel heard, but of course you want to manage those expectations, right? You want to make sure that they feel heard, but without thinking that by being heard that it's going to... Um, be be implemented right so exactly. that that also is a balancing act okay interesting yeah. and that's also something i think uh to keep in mind as a customer success manager is that a lot of the time you, you you listen to the customer you get the feature request and you said yes i have reported it um and i mean you need to be a little bit careful there as well what the expect what the customer mm-hmm. or the user will expect you have reported it. What does that mean? Does yeah, it mean that right. it will be implemented? Right. Does it mean that it's, uh, you know, is it in the bin? Where are we here? So right. I, I know, you know, because if given my, you know, gut gut estimate that 5% of the feature requests ever get implemented, it's a big chance that this specific customer request uh, will never happen, right? So we need to be also, you know, managing the expectations when someone um, submits a feature request or or gives feedback to the product. Well, I think this is really interesting. As a CSM, I may not know what happens to that request. Like if I actually report it, which you know, if you're not do if you're not reporting it, you probably shouldn't be telling your customer you are. But at the same time, what does reporting it mean? You know, where does it go? So I think there's a lot of sort of. Um, and, you know, it's unknown to customer success what happens on, quote unquote, the product side, right? Yeah. Like, what is the process? I think there's an opportunity there for uh, for, for the, the product side to sort of 
be a little bit more transparent in, in how these decisions are made. Um, not so that we can over explain it to the customer, but so that the CSM can have a better understanding of how it works and can more properly manage expectations. And um, also just, you know, be able to tell a customer, um, you know, what, 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 I guess, properly managing expectations, you know, telling them what to expect. But I think on the other hand, a CSM should also be um, confident enough um, to, and this could go back to objective confidence, just making sure that you're trained up on the product, that you really, you know, that to, to the extent that you need to be, you're not in support, but you need to, you know, obviously know enough about the product and it's going to depend on your situation, how, how in-depth that product knowledge needs to be. But to be able to tell a customer, look, here's what you're trying to accomplish. Here's how we do that in our product. Oh, yeah. What, what, yeah. You're, what you're saying is, you know, how you would have done it in that other product, but that's not how we do it here. But we were, we were going to get you to the same outcome. Yeah. And yes, that means, you know, being sort of having that empathy for the end user that you're talking to that, yes, your, your process will change, but um, that's okay. We'll get past it but you will still be able to achieve the same objective and maybe you'll even be able to do it more efficiently or, or, you know, in a, in a way that's actually in, ends up being more enjoyable uh, than you were exactly. doing it with the other products. So um, I think that's also a really critical piece. Yeah, that's a really good one. Good point because, you know, just passing things on or, or make to product and, and, you know, kind of excusing our product for not having that feature that, that will not help you either. So, I think that's a really good point, Lincoln, too, that, the, that you as a customer success manager, even even if this other way of doing the things will add one step, uh, in, you know, one extra step in, in the in the process, uh, talking about the goal and keeping that in mind, uh, really important. And may, maybe this thing was a little bit more, was a little bit more difficult to do in our platform than the previous one you used. But on the other side, you will get these benefits from our platform that you didn't get in that other one. So exactly, having a full, com- com- like having the full picture of both what the platform and the product can do, and of course what the customer is trying to achieve, which is what, what I mean. And that's what you need as a customer success manager as well. I mean, that's that's the foundation as well. So. For sure, and I think you know, just kind of one more thing on that, just to take it to a place where I think a lot of CSMs will go to is, you know, one of the, I don't know how, you know, what the right, right way to frame it is, but, but essentially CSMs want to be, or are told that they need to be um, a trusted advisor to the customer, right? That that's a term that comes up a lot. Yeah. And, you know, as part of that trusted advisor role, uh, I think they're, again, there's sort of an expectation that the CSM is going to be advocating for the customer sort of behind the scenes. I think that there's a, a there's definitely a place for that. And I want to talk about a little bit, you know, how, how, how the CSM can advocate for the customer um, because you know, with, with product um, yeah. even when a customer is not providing direct feedback. And I think this is what's, what's really interesting is that CSMs, you know, and I'm interested in your take on this, of course, um, you know, a customer might not be telling a CSM, um, you know, here's my thought on uh, this particular feature or, or on this functionality or this, you know, this, this widget or whatever. But the customer is providing context, whatever that, whatever that is, that the CSM can use to infer where improvements need to be made. So the CSM themselves um, have just possess a lot of context that I think would be valuable to product. But again, now it comes down to how does, how is that presented? Cause this is not feedback coming from the customer, which I don't know if that would be weighted heavier or, uh, or, you know, sort of weighted as more important than uh, what the CSM says or, or not. That's, that's a, uh, also a topic for maybe another uh, yeah. podcast episode, but um, you know, whether the customer is saying it or the CSM is saying it, this stuff could be important. So I think that there needs to be a, an internal path for this information to be conveyed from CS from customer success to product, even where a customer didn't raise their hand and say, I have a very specific piece of feedback for you. 
Yeah, no, I think that's a really important point. And my experience here is that like maybe even, maybe this type of feedback is the most important one. Mm. Uh, of course, there are some users, some customers that provide real great product feedback. But I, w- I would say like a really experienced uh, senior customer success manager, senior in the sense that they, they fully understand the platform, the product, the use cases, the customers, what they're trying to achieve. What that person picks up when they are in a, in a call, uh, working with their customer, seeing what they're trying to do, and, and, and connecting that to what the product can provide today and maybe what's missing or what's not working as good as it should. I think they have a unique, or we have in customer success, a unique insight into how the product is actually being used in practice. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's gold, but that's, it, it's, um, it's, uh, <laughs> you kind of need to work to identify uh, who can provide that gold to product. Because it's in, in general, it's it takes quite a lot to be able to uh, to see that basically. But that's that's really where uh, I mean that's I've I've res- a lot of the most important developments where we have implemented improvements have come from customer success really understanding where the product is not up to standard or missing something really critical in the day to day usage of the product or i think that's where there's a lot of great feedback to be picked up for product there right okay so that's really good i i i I like that i think that totally you know connects with what with with my experience um and it's just interesting to to think about um you know obviously csms have a lot of that that context and insight but yeah what is the What's the process of getting that to product? I think that's going to be, you know, it's going to differ from company to company, but I think there needs to be a way um, for CSMs to communicate this somehow, maybe inside of the customer success organization. And then ultimately that gets yeah. processed somehow and, and then passed over to, to, to product. Because I imagine multiple CSMs are having the same experience, right? So um, that all needs to sort of roll up to something yeah. Um, inside of customer success before it just gets passed over to the product. And, you know, uh, otherwise it's going to be just too much coming at them, which kind of goes back to this idea of <laughs> if, if the only thing you're ever telling product is that their, uh, that their product sucks, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. the thing that they built, the yeah. thing that they're continuing to work on. <laughs> if the only thing you ever tell them is how much, you know, h- how bad it is, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, that they're going to start pushing back on, on what you say, that they're not going to want to hear from you. So I think there's yeah. an, there's, there's another aspect to this. Um, unless of course the product just doesn't work at all, in which case I don't know what, you know, go find another place to work. Like, but if assuming that our customers are actually, you know, being able to achieve some level of success using the product, mm. I would encourage you to convey that to product as well. And, and, you know, make sure that you're sharing success stories, interesting use cases. I always like to share use cases that are, that, that the product was not necessarily designed to solve for, but our customers figured out a different way to use it or to do something unique with it. Because I find that again, everything is, you know, it's going to depend on, on your, you know, who's in your product organization. But a lot of times I've found people that run product to be genuinely, interested in that like oh okay that wasn't something that we thought about that's really cool now sometimes you might find you know you you may run into somebody with a really big ego that that doesn't want to hear that someone's using the product in a different way than they designed it but um that's you know that's not always going to be the case and that's that's actually fairly rare in my experience most of the time it's very interesting and so share those success stories share positive use cases and share positive feedback from your customers yeah um you know I say make a little compliment sandwich, <laughs> share an interesting yeah. use case, then an issue that needs to be addressed, you know, and then a piece of positive feedback. Um, I, you know, that's kind of, I'm kind of joking there, but I'm, I'm kind of not. So yeah, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, that the only thing they're hearing from us 
uh, in customer success, you know, isn't just bad news, right? We want to make sure that they understand that our customers are getting value. Here's the way that they're getting value. Here are some unique ways that they're getting value. Um, you know, and then you can also talk about some of the ways that the product could be improved or some things that need to be added. But I, I think, you know, just, just remembering that you are working with humans. Yes. And as much as, you know, we think everything is just business, um, people have feelings and people have emotional connection to the work that they do. And that's great. We want that. Um, so be, be aware of that. You wouldn't want somebody to only ever come to you with how bad you are at your job. <laughs> that would start to get pretty old pretty yes. fast. So just something to think about there. No, I, I agree fully there. And uh, I, th I think also sometimes product really appreciates to hear that they know they should be listening more to the customers usually. So when, if you can help them there a little bit, uh, give them uh, more insights and um, be the voice, share the, share the voice of the customer uh, and, and definitely bring some you know, appreciation uh, back. I think that's a great way. And and when you want when you want to bring up a request or something that you think should be improved in the product, pick pick your fight basically. Pick the things that you really uh, focus on the most important things here. Don't bring too much. Uh, I think that's then things you know kind of get lost. Uh, so focus on the most the one th the most important things you have. For sure, for sure. So, so let's, uh, so what are three things yeah. that, I mean, we just, you just gave a really a good one there, but what are, what are three more things that we can do to, to really help the, the person that, that asked this question, you know, some concrete things that we could, uh, we could give them. I, I'll just start, I, like I, like we just talked about, you know, don't just bring negativity. I think, um, really sharing those positive customer stories. Um, I just, I, that would be top of my list. Making sure, you know, look, you want friends in product. You don't want enemies. So be nice. <laughs> no, definitely. And, and another thing for customer success to do here is uh, involve product. Uh, bring them to a customer meeting. Bring them to a workshop. Have them sit, sit, uh, sit in on a call where you, uh, or where, you, where you share a screen with the customer and they, they mm. get to see what they're doing. I mean, that's... Yeah. Uh, Oh, and not just an escalation meeting where, where the product is broken. No, no, exactly. Not, <laughs> right? not only like the emergency call. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about a positive, you know, just where, where yeah. they're going to, yeah. No, that's awesome. I love that. I love that. I think that's, and, and the flip side here is product, uh, you know, make sure uh, there's, there's a lot of focus on shipping. Um, when you're in product, you want to ship and move on to the next thing, but Spend some time to follow through on when you release. Actually watching the customer use your platform live. I mean, it's such a learning uh, curve when you, when you have uh, someone from product being, I mean, if you can, of course, be in a room where you have a lot of users just looking over their shoulders, what they're doing, how they're interacting with your tool. Uh, maybe in a virtual way, do that sharing screen. I think from product side, you need to be more out there, uh, actually seeing the product being used uh, in any way you can. I think that's a, a major point to improve in this area as well. For sure, for sure. And, okay, I, I have to add an, an extra one. If if we're if we're talking to product, um, making sure that you communicate whatever changes um, that you've just released to customer success. Um, I've had yeah. I've had too many situations where a customer success manager um, gets in, in the product with the customer, you know, in a meeting and is surprised by, you know, a change in, in workflow or, or new features. And that's just a bad look, right? So we want to make oh, yeah. sure that that communication is there and CSMs read the release notes. You don't want that surprise either. So, you know, this is all about communication and, and, and maintaining alignment, but those are some, I think those are some pretty good, uh, recommendations that should help definitely that's perfect all right thanks everyone hey thanks for listening do you want to bring your customer success to the next level check out impact academy we have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success